Hey gang and welcome to this series where we're going to take a bit of a deeper dive into the React router. So then my friends, just very quickly before we begin talking about the React router, I want to talk about why we need to use the React router. So whenever you make a site using React, you're normally making something called a single page application or an SBA for short. And what that means is that when we request the website from the server in the browser, the server then sends back just a single HTML page. And along with that, the React JavaScript code needed to render content and React components onto that page. Now, in actual fact, you'll be very surprised to know that most websites don't consist just of a single page of content. And normally you click on a link in the menu to go to a different page, right? So in traditional websites that are not single page applications, when we click on one of those links, it would send a fresh request to the server for a brand new HTML page. But that's not the way that React or SPAs in general were designed to work. Instead, SPAs like to handle all of the routing in the browser on the front end and not send any additional requests to the server for new pages. And that's where the React router is needed because out of the box, React doesn't come loaded with a fully baked front end routing mechanism. So typically when we make React sites, we install an additional package called React Router DOM, which allows us to easily handle routing in the browser. And the way this works is that when we click on a link to a different page in the website, the React Router intercepts that request and stops it reaching the server. And instead the React Router swaps out the page content depending on whatever page that we requested, where each page is essentially just a React component. And this is a really fast process because it's all handled on the front end in the browser and we're not sending requests to the server. So that's the why and a bit about the how. Now let's take a look at what we'll be covering in the rest of this series. So in this series, we'll be making a simple React application which lists out a load of jobs and we can click on each job to see the job details. We've also got some other pages like a help page which has a few nested routes as well for additional content. You can see at the top of the site, we've got some breadcrumbs as well, which we'll be making with a little help from the React Router 2. And aside from all the essentials, you're also going to be learning about some of the newer React Router features, such as loaders, error components, forms, and actions. Now, a lot of those newer features require the most up-to-date version of React Router at the time of recording this video. So that's the version that we'll be using. So there's quite a lot to cover and hopefully by the end of this series, you'll be pretty well versed with how to use a lot of what the package has to offer. So then just quickly before we start, I've created course files for this entire series and they're all on this GitHub repo right here, React Router in depth. So I'm going to leave a link to this down below. Now each lesson has its own branch on this repo. So if you want to download the code for lesson five, for example, you'd select the lesson five branch right here and then download it by clicking the green button and downloading a zip. So that would be for that lesson. However, I've also created some starter files for this project as well. So to get those, go to lesson one. And this is just like a simple React site template that we're going to download now. And we can start from that position rather than, you know, spinning up a brand new React site. So click on code and then go to download zip to download that. All right. So I've just downloaded that zip folder. I've extracted everything inside it. So we have this folder right here now. I'm going to go into that and this is the project right here. If we double click into that, we can see the project files. So I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to rename this to be the name of the site that we're creating, which is just going to be called Job Router because we're rooting for jobs, right? So this is the name of the project now. I'm going to right click that and I'm going to open this up in VS Code. So this, my friends, is our starter project. Now, before we do anything, we need to install all of the dependencies listed right here. So I'm going to open up a terminal right now and I'm going to type npm install to do that. Make sure you're in the project directory right here. Okay, so now they're all installed. I'm just going to give you a very quick tour of this application. So I made this using npx create react app and then the name of the application. Now inside the source folder, I've stripped out a lot of the default files that we get with that app creation. So we still have the index.js file, which is where we're kind of kickstarting the application right here. We also have the root component app.js over here, which is a very, very, very simple component, just a bit of text. And then we also have an index.css file. This is where we're going to keep all of our styles just to keep it simple because I don't want to derail away from the React router. So you can see at the top, we import a font, which is Poppins. And then down here, we have a couple of variables for two different colors we're going to use inside this application. We have some styles for the body to strip out the margin, give it a bit of padding 
apply the font family of poppins and set the background to be this secondary variable right here, the blue color. Every other element we say color it white, that's the text color, strip out the margin. Uh, for p tags, we say give it a margin top and bottom of 20 pixels though. Then we have some styles for borders as well. And we just say, uh, rather for buttons, not borders, we just say strip out the border, give it some padding, border radius to soften the corners, color of white, background color of primary, which is the red color. And then the cursor is pointer. So these are all comments right here for other sections we're going to create throughout the rest of this series. And we'll just add that in as we go along. All right. So let's close that down. Also, inside the data folder, we have this db.json file. And inside here, we can see a load of JSON. We have a careers property, which is an array of career objects. Now, this is the data we're going to be using later on. And we'll fetch this from a React component at some point. But that, my friends, is the start application. Like I said, dead simple. So what I want to do now is spin up a local dev server and preview this in a browser. So to do that, open up a terminal again. I'm going to clear this to give me some room and then type npm start to spin up that dev server. And there we go, my friends. There is the starter project in its full glory. I'm just going to zoom in so it has the full maximum effect. And uh, yeah, just a single page at the moment. But in the next lesson, we're going to look at all of the React router basics to set up a couple more pages and some routes. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series. And please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot, and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.